There we go. We're recording now. Again, recording so you guys can watch this um, if you need to on Michael's community classroom page. So I will quit yapping and let Jesse get to painting because that's why we're all here. Um, hey guys, like Kira said, my name is Jesse. Welcome. Um, and we're going to be painting this really cute birdhouse tonight. Um, so I'll start by letting you know, just as a reminder, I know you can see it in the event listing, what supplies I'll be using tonight. So I've got my 10 by 10 canvas. So any square is fine. Um, if you've got a rectangle, that's fine too. Um, you can just, you know, you can either make your birdhouse taller or you can make your birdhouse wider or just have more negative space in the background. It's completely fine. Um, I've got my palette paper here, which is just some wax coated paper um, that I like to use for mixing my paints. I've got my paper towels here um, and my water basin for cleaning my brushes. And then the brushes I'm gonna be using is this Craftsmart pack. Um, so I kind of mix it up with the Craft Smart uh, packs of brushes from Michaels. So as long as it's got a, a fairly good variety of brushes, I always like to have a medium sized flat brush. So three quarter inch flat or a one inch flat. Um, I like to have sort of a medium or small flat brush. Um, so these are a number six and a number 12, but anything similar to this is fine. A quarter inch, a half inch, anything that looks like this is perfectly fine. Um, I've also got, I always like to have a um, little liner brush too. So this is a number four round. Anything that looks like this brush, whatever you've got at home that's kind of like this is fine. Trust me. If, if it's close, it's, it's good. And I also have a palette knife here tonight. So um, this I think is a three inch palette knife maybe, but a four inch is good too. As long as you just have a nice long palette knife, um, that's what we'll be using tonight. If you don't have a palette knife, um, go ahead and grab like an old gift card or something. We're just going to be using this for texture, so don't worry. We're not going to be like doing any painting with the palette knife. I know some people don't like that, <laughs> so don't stress. Um, we're just going to be adding a little bit of texture and detail at the end. Um, so go ahead, like I said, if you have like an old Michaels gift card or an old, you know, Visa gift card or something like that in your wallet, go ahead and grab that and you can use that instead. Um, and then, of course, as always, we'll be using our folk art acrylics. So the colors I have tonight are um, coffee bean, which is just like a chocolatey brown color. So any sort of just like, like, you know, standard chocolatey brown you've got at home is fine. I've got some navy blue. I've got light blue. Um, so if you don't have light blue, if you've got like white and just like a royal blue, like an ultramarine blue, just mix those together and that's fine. Um, I've got my wicker white, which is just a nice white color. And then I've got engine red, which is just sort of a, a standard primary red. So if you've got anything similar to that, um, then you are good to go. That said, we don't have a lot of paints tonight. We're gonna be kind of doing a little bit of mixing for our painting um, and doing some layers of color. So um, yeah, we've only got the five colors, which is nice, if, especially if you're limited on supplies right now. Um, but yeah, that said, we can go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna go ahead and I've got a number four round brush here. So any sort of small round brush that kind of looks like this. So I'll set that here so you guys can go ahead and pull that out. And then on my palette, I'm going to put some of my light blue. And then I'm also going to put some of my navy blue to start things off. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna um, grab my, my um, number four round brush, like I said, and I'm gonna dip it in some water. And I'm gonna shake most of the water off but I'm not gonna wipe my paper towel. I'm gonna dip it into my um, navy blue paint and we're gonna kind of sketch out our composition. So I always kind of say that just because if you've painted with me before, I very rarely use a pencil to draw out my design. I usually just use my paintbrush to draw out my design. So if you feel much more comfortable using a pencil and you've got one nearby, go ahead and grab that. Um, but I just usually draw out my, um, my composition using my paintbrush. So that said, we are going to start by just drawing a line right here, um, this fence line we're gonna draw. So it's maybe three inches from the bottom. So I always kind of recommend um, to get a um, level line like this. I'll mark my fingers where I want it. So I'll make a mark there. And then I do my best to keep my fingers in the same position and move it to the other side and mark there. And then I try to move it into the middle and mark there as well. So that way I have a good idea. It's of course not gonna be perfectly level because we didn't use a ruler or anything, um, but I have it, I know that it's gonna be pretty level because I measured each, I measured you know, in three places of our fence and they're all the same width apart um, or the same height, I guess I should say. So now that we've done that, all we're gonna do is connect our line. 
And if you've got a ruler nearby and you, and you did grab your pencil, if you're kind of working at your little art station or your craft area, and you've got those extra supplies, feel free to just, you know, lay your ruler down and grab your pencil and draw the straight line. That works too. I just always like to give some options in case you don't have those supplies. So again, all we did was just drew our, this simple line that is going to be um, where our fence is in this painting. That's all we did. Okay, so now that we've done that, um, we're gonna kind of mark where our birdhouse is kind of sitting on this fence. Maybe it's behind it. I think it's kind of sitting on the fence in my imagination anyway. Um, so we're gonna mark where this birdhouse is on our fence. So I'm gonna say it's about, again, this is all just guesstimating. So don't stress about it. Don't, the measurements are not what matters. The angles are not what matters for this painting. What matters is later on when we start adding color uh, and value and um, layering of the paint and textures, that's what's gonna be the fun part. So please don't stress about the angles because I know it kind of looks like a very geometric shape now, but that is not what's important. So again, so that being said, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna measure about two inches or so from here. And I'm gonna mark that just again, eyeballing it on my painting. So that's gonna be the bottom left corner of my birdhouse here. And then what do you say? It's about four inches from there. We're gonna mark it again. It's probably about halfway through our painting or halfway through our canvas, I should say. So I got those two bottom marks that are going to be my, um, the two bottom edges of my birdhouse. Again, we're just really eyeballing it, so don't stress yet. And then I'm going to lay my brush here. I'm not touching the canvas. I'm just sort of laying my brush over the canvas. And I'm just seeing, you can see there that it's right in between those two um, marks, right? Can everybody see there, right there, how my brush is right in between my two marks? And since I kind of like where I have it, I'm going to press my brush down and I have that mark there. And now I know that that is just about between these two marks there. So everybody, uh, I'm hovering about an inch above my canvas. I can see it, I got it right. It's kind of like a pool stick. I've got it right where I want it. And I'm going to touch down and get that mark where my bristles hit the canvas. So as you can see, we're just sort of mapping out where the birdhouse is going to be. So now that I've got that, um, I'm going to start drawing the roof here. So this is going to be the peak of my birdhouse right where we just marked. I'm going to go down to the left and just draw a roof shape and then down to the right and draw a roof shape. And it's not going to be perfect because we're not measuring it. We're just making it look as perfect as we can. This is going to be a homemade birdhouse. Okay, this is not a factory made birdhouse. This is one made by hand. So it's not going to be perfect and that's okay. And then once we've done that, you can see I've gone past these two marks because you can see in our final painting, the um, roof of our birdhouse goes past the wall. It doesn't just meet the wall. So I've gone past those two marks there because that's where we marked our walls to be. And then we're, we can go ahead and paint in that line there just to line that up. Just a nice line there to line up, just paint in our little walls there. So once we've done that, um, hopefully that wasn't too tricky. Again, we just did our fence line. We marked off where the base is, of our birdhouse is going to be. We imagined the center of that and made the mark. We painted our roof here, and then we just connected the two sides. So now we're gonna do basically the same thing. This is sort of a double decker birdhouse. So we're gonna do basically the same thing for our little attic part here. We're going to go right in the center where we were but of course we're gonna move up a couple of inches. So you can see where my brush is. I'm going right in the center and I'm doing the same thing. I'm gonna to touch down right there. And that's how I know where the, the top point of my birdhouse is going to be. And I'm gonna try my best to sort of keep parallel to these lines. So I'm just gonna paint in my line there. So again, trying to go parallel with this one. I don't want it to really be a different angle than that. Whatever angle you ended up making here, mine's certainly not a 90 degree angle. If yours is, that's good too. Um, but just try to follow whatever the first angle is that you painted on, on your uh, little birdhouse roof. And then the second line here. So that's going to be our roof. Our top roof, I should say. And then once you have that, we're just going to, um, the last step of this birdhouse. So we're almost done. This is, this is kind of the, in my opinion, this is the least fun part. The fun part is adding the color for me. So this is sort of like the strenuous part of the painting. It's almost done. We're just gonna paint in the last two lines. We want them to be further in than our two walls here. We're just gonna paint these two walls right here. And that is it for painting our birdhouse. 
So I'll give you guys just a second to catch up because I want to make sure everybody's got their their um, line and their composition painted in before we continue um, and start adding color. How's everybody doing, Kira? Um, everybody's doing good. And just a reminder that this place is a safe um, private class that you have to sign up for. So no spam and no inappropriate talk because you're going to be blocked. Um, so just have to say that. So this is a place for, you know, grownups and kids that want to paint and be creative. So that's all I'm going to say. Thank you. Yes. So we're taking care of it. Okay, good, good. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> All right. Everybody keep painting, less typing, more painting. <laughs> um, okay, cool. So hopefully you guys have had a chance to sort of sketch in um, your birdhouse, the composition. We're not worried about these branches yet. You can see here, we're gonna paint those in on top of our base coat. So this is all your, your painting should look like. Don't worry about these lines here. We're gonna paint over all of that. It should look fairly similar to mine, at least as, as far as how many lines we've got going on. <clears throat> so now that we have that in, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab my number, or I'm sorry, my three-fourths inch flat brush. So any sort of, um, Small to medium brush will work for this. Most packs, when you buy these like variety brush packs, especially at Michael's, they come with this size brush. This is usually the biggest one in it, whether it's the angle or the flat or, um, you know, seven piece variety set, 10 piece variety set, whatever it is, they generally come with a three fourths inch flat brush. So go ahead and grab something like this now. And we're going to start painting in um, this background here. So we're gonna start painting in the blue area. So I'm going to grab some of the light blue on my brush. So I've got light blue here and I'm just going to start um, painting that in on the top. So I'm just going to start kind of painting it in strokes like this. You know, normally when we base coat something, we kind of go left and right or up and down and we have nice broad strokes. But you can see for this one, there's like a lot of texture and a lot of um, uh, just sort of like really texture, a lot of different texture going on in the background. It's not super flat looking. So in order to achieve that, we're gonna be kind of just doing these loose brush strokes to fill in this area. So you can see as I'm doing here, I'm just sort of pulling down in these loose brush strokes and I'm starting with the top area of my painting. And again, I have my 3 fourths inch flat and I'm using light blue. And I'm using my, I'm just sort of pulling down on the top here. And when I get up to my um, birdhouse roof, I, I am going to use the edge of my brush to get kind of a flat line just because I want that clean edge against my birdhouse. I don't want to go over that line. And Jesse, what colors are you using again? Right now, my palette, I have light blue and navy blue. So any kind of aqua, light blue, navy blue will work great. Totally. And if you, um, if you don't have these colors at home, hopefully just kind of in your like base stash of paint, you have like an ultramarine blue uh, and a white and a brown. So for navy, you can try mixing like, if you got like a bright ultramarine blue, mix that with brown to get navy. And then also mix that ultramarine blue with white to get light blue. So hopefully those are kind of like some basic colors that most people, if you've got, you know, a solid paint stash, hopefully will have. So hopefully that'll be helpful. And again, I'm just sticking to the top right now. And you can see I'm kind of just going around uh, my birdhouse area as carefully as I can, which we can always go back and cover it up. If you accidentally get some paint there, you can see I just did that. Not a big deal. We're going to paint over that anyway. We're just trying to save us, so save ourselves a little bit of work. All right, so I've got like kind of the top half-ish of my background painted. So now I'm not going to clean my brush off. I'm just going to start picking up some navy blue and start painting that into the bottom half. Again, we're not painting our fence yet. That's going to be brown. So we're, we're not quite there yet. So I'm just adding my navy blue into the bottom half and I haven't cleaned my brush off. I still have light blue on my brush. So we're just going to kind of overlap them in the middle. We're just going to kind of start blending them in naturally in the middle. You can see I'm being super loose with my brush strokes and not being terribly careful. And that's because you want that really sort of painterly, very loose brush stroke look. And you can see I'm going over um, my little roof here because of course it's the same color. So we're, it's gonna disappear and that's okay. We'll go back in and we can redefine that later on. So I kind of have a halfway, they're overlapping a little. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe off my excess navy blue and go back in with some light blue and start keep blending it because I want to get a little lighter. You can use sort of the final paint here as reference. You, you can see how it gets sort of light. So we're going to keep adding paint until we have sort of a, a medium blue background and it's all nice and blended. And as I'm painting, if I have too much dark paint on or too much light paint, I'm just wiping it on my paper towel as I go to kind of start fresh a little bit. We feel like you've got a little bit too much paint on your canvas, which I kind of feel that way right now, actually. I'm kind of just wiping some off with my brush and wiping it onto the paper towel. I feel like I've got a good bit of paint on there, maybe more than I need. So that's why I'm kind of wiping some of that off right now. Yeah, and Jesse is using folk art paint. Mm -hmm. And are you using craft smart brushes tonight? We are here. I can put the pack in here. This yeah. is the craft, so craft smart, smart brush brushes. Pack. And folk yep, art it's paint. The, yeah, it's the Craft Smart Multi Service Premium All Media Brush Set. It comes with seven pieces. So, really, any of like the variety packs of brushes at Michael's are really awesome. So, I have a few different ones, um, but they all have really similar um, options in them, which is great. You can see it's getting really blended on the right side. So you can kind of tell um, if you're a little bit behind me, yours might look like the left side. And what we're going for is the right side. It's a little bit darker on the bottom and a little bit lighter on the top. We're just doing really loose brush strokes. I'm barely pressing down on my canvas to sort of blend these colors together. I'm starting on my left side now. So you can see we're just covering up, the, we're covering up sort of the edges of the roof at this point. That's okay. As long as we keep our base shape, we can just fill those in later. We can just go back and add those um, sort of extending roof parts. All right. So again, it's super choppy. It's not really blended. Um, we're not doing big, long brush strokes because you want it to be choppy. You want to have that really pretty loose texture in the background. So I'll give everybody just a minute to catch up on that. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna clean my brush off. Yep, and any shade of light blue, some people were asking if a sky mist. So any shade of light blue would work. Yeah, sky mist is pretty similar to light blue, like to like the actual folk art color light blue. Of course, they're all light blues, but um, the official folk art light blue, those are two pretty similar colors. So if you have sky mist, I would go ahead and use that. Yeah. Whenever I clean my brushes, I wanna make sure I get all the water out. You can see I'm sort of pressing um, the ferrule of my brush into my paper towel. This is how I like to make sure I've sort of um, stopped all the water up into the paper towels instead of into my brush. And I kind of keep doing that until I see that there's no more water on the paper towel. So the next step, super simple. I'm gonna grab the brown that I have and I have coffee bean. Um, but you can use real brown or um, cocoa bean. Um, just any like basic brown, like medium brown color is fine for this part. All we're gonna do is we're gonna use the same brush and we're just gonna paint the fence brown. That's all we're doing for this next step. Just so we can get that base color down. Just painting flat brown to cover up this little fence area down at the bottom. Yep. And we are using folk art paint. So we make folk art paint plaid. We, <laughs> Jesse and I are back there making paint. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So um, we, our company plaid manufactures folk art paint. Yeah. So it's really rich and creamy. It comes in a great um, amount of colors and formulas at Michael's. So that is our Absolutely. pick out of yeah. these classes. For sure. I love, love, love using folk art paints, especially for like canvas painting like this. Just got really great coverage and the colors blend really well. And like Kira said, there's like 
hundreds of colors to choose from. Um, but it's definitely, even if I didn't work here, it would be my go-to. It was my go-to before I worked here. So <laughs> it's a really great paint. <laughs> Someone said we're the Janes of all trades. <laughs> Some days you don't even know what goes on there. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> uh. We get to do a lot of really fun classes for Michael. So maybe that person has seen us mod podging or making yeah. ornaments or doing tie dye or <laughs> any of the other type of stuff we get to do. <laughs> the Christmas decorations. Yeah, all the Those things. The Chalk furniture. <laughs> yep. Those are the little elves. Yes, super, super fun. So my fence is brown. I'm just rinsing my brush again. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab some of my wicker white, but any white will do. Whatever white acrylic paint you have in front of you is fine. Um, put a little bit of that on my palette and I'm going to switch to a slightly smaller brush. Um, if you don't have a slightly smaller flat brush, you can totally use the one we were just using, but we're going to paint the birdhouse and it's a little bit smaller of an area. So since I have it, I'm switching to my number 12 flat brush and I'm going to paint um, just inside the birdhouse area. And a lot of people might be saying, well, my canvas is white and the birdhouse is white. So why do I have to paint it? Um, it's just a good habit to get into. So, um, you know, when you buy a canvas at the store, it's got gesso on it or it's got some sort of primer on it from the factory, from the manufacturer. Um, and it doesn't have any acrylic paint. So it's just a good habit to get into to always make sure that your entire canvas is covered in paint. It's just the way that I was taught to paint. Um, and it keeps everything with a really nice finish. So when we go to paint on top of this and we go to start adding layers on top, everything will sort of work the same. It'll be cohesive. It'll all sort of take the techniques the same way because we'll make sure we have a nice solid coat um, of acrylic paint down before we start adding things on top. You can see I'm kind of just going right up to the roof area because I don't want to lose that shape. So just sort of going right up to it <laughs> um, without going over it. Yep, so lots of people love in folk art. Somebody said that the pure that we painted with Andy is very thick and different to paint with. So absolutely, this is a little bit just a thinner, different type of acrylic. It's less heavy bodied. Um, and mm -hmm. people are asking why they can't get paint. Um, so, and I think we've um, talked about this last time, but just so you guys know, like I said, we make the paint. Um, literally our paint is made here. We are in um, Georgia and Atlanta, and we have a plant that manufactures the paint. So it's US um, made product and um, they are working 24 seven, like literally around the really? clock, um, trying the to keep up with the demand. Absolutely. It is always open. Yep, and be safe. So um, they are shipping product out as fast as they possibly can. So I know some of the Michael stores have gotten better recently. Um, so that's so, and we appreciate you guys being so loyal um, and supporting us. And again, if you don't have the exact color, you can't find it. We just want you to be inspired. So, you know, buy your paint at Michael's. Um, we love that you buy our paint, of course, but again, we just really wanna bring you guys inspiration. So, um, and, you know, understanding that's an, you know, US-based company and product, which we love, so. Yeah. Yeah. They're working hard to mix that paint. They are. <laughs> Um, so like I said, that was my number 12 brush and that was wicker white and all I did was I just base coated the um, little uh, birdhouse that we painted. Um, and you can see I kind of just went right up to that roof area. I didn't want to lose that line so we can kind of go back and fill it back in later. Um, but I wanted to make sure that I did not um, lose that line. So 
So while you guys are catching up, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna grab my hair dryer. I forgot to grab it, just right here. Perfect, and I'll give everybody a chance to get caught up. forget something. Okay, so I just went ahead and grabbed my hair dryer. Um, if you don't have a hair dryer, don't stress about it. Cause like Kira said, this um, video is being recorded. So it'll be available on michaels.com. If you, um, for whatever reason, don't get to finish your painting tonight while we're painting, you can just come back and watch a recording later and then you can pause it as much as many times as you want. Um, which is great. I like to paint that way better. So um, but anyway, that said, I have a hair dryer just because we're trying our best to keep it within an hour, um, just kind of keep this process moving. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit my hair dryer now. Um, I like to keep it on the highest um, like pressure setting, the highest blow setting, um, and I kind of switch between hot and cold. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Mine's nice and dry. Um, and so we can move, start moving on to the next steps. All right, so I talked about before we were kind of um, trying to hang on to this line here and this line as well, but this one's in the middle of the way. So we're kind of trying to hang on to that because we want to go back and um, like paint it in better later. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. So I'm going to grab my number four round brush. So kind of like a little liner brush if you've got something similar. And I'm going to pick up some navy blue on my brush. And we're just going to very um, carefully sort of fill that line back in, similar to the way we had it when we first painted the birdhouse in the first place. We first sort of drew out those lines. So remember, we had it sort of go extending off of either side past the walls, just like you can see in this final painting. I'm going to go ahead and carefully um, do that now. I'm just going to keep my, my brush as steady as I can. Again, it's not going to be perfect, but we'll do our best to keep it as tidy as we can. And I'm putting very little pressure on my brush. I'm just holding it. You can see I'm sort of bracing my brush with my hand so I can get that nice um, steady line. That's why I like for my uh, painting to be dry, like step after step, so I can put my hand down in it and brace my hand without getting uh, paint everywhere. And then if it's more comfortable for you, you can sort of tilt your painting to get that other angle. I'm always tilting my paintings whenever I'm painting like this. Again, I'm right-handed, so if you're um, left-handed, you probably want to tilt your painting the other way for the other side of the roof, but feel free to do so. We've got our little roof pane back in there. And we're going to hang on to, I went ahead and cleaned my brush off. We're going to hang on to our um, number four round brush, the same one that we just used to paint our roof. And we're going to paint these little branches here so that are, that are coming into um, the painting. So it's kind of like we said in the beginning, it's like kind of like a winter birdhouse, you know. Um, so we've got these cute berries here, maybe they're little buds, maybe it's springtime. Um, but we wanted to add a little color, by we, I mean me, I'm not sure why I'm um, saying we. I wanted to add some color into this painting. I kind of had finished it and it was looking kind of like dreary and I didn't want it to be super dreary. So we added this cute little pop of red in just to give it a little bit of warmth. Um, so anyway, 
Um, we're gonna go ahead and paint this, these branches using our number four round brush. And it's going to be a very organic um, line. So everything here is very, um, very straight lines, very angular. We have the straight line on the bottom. The birdhouse is very angular. This is gonna be a very soft line to kind of give the um, painting a little bit more contrast. So that said, how we're gonna paint this line is I'm going to load my brush up with some wicker white. And I'm gonna start near the birdhouse and I'm going to put very, very little pressure on my brush. And I'm gonna kind of give it a little bit of a wiggle. And as I get towards the right side of my canvas, I'm gonna press down and that's gonna give me a thicker line. So here, I'll show you in the final painting. It's very thin at the tip where we're gonna start and we're gonna drag to the right. So we're going to start pressing down harder and harder and harder and harder as we get to the right side of the canvas. And that's going to give us that thin to thick line, which is the way that branches really look in nature. And again, I mentioned before, if you're left-handed and you're going to be pulling left, you're going to want to start heavy. You're going to want to put heavy pressure down, heavy pressure down, and then lift up as you're going further into your branch. So again, heavy pressure makes thick lines, light pressure makes thin lines. We can remember that um, you can do some practice with your brush. You can get a lot of really cool um, brush techniques down. So we'll start here, a very light pressure, kind of go nice loose sort of wave, kind of imagining how brushes look. And I'm starting to press down here into that nice thick line at the, at the base. So a lot of times when I'm doing this, I like to, you know, I'll pull up my fill on like a tree just kind of get some inspiration so I can try to make my branches look as realistic as possible. Um, or, you know, if you're sitting by a window, check out a tree outside, kind of see how the branches connect, kind of see how they are attached to each other. Um, and that helps me a lot when I'm doing things like this. So I do another one um, below it that sort of, I'm kind of gonna kind of follow this one here. That's sort of connect this. I'm gonna start here, very light and press down heavier and heavier and connect it to that branch. And then I'm going to add another branch over it. Again, I'm just following sort of the same composition that I did originally. You can see what I'm doing here. I'm kind of twist, twirling my brush in the paint. And that's to help me get that nice pointy tip. That's what you can see here. I'm twirling my brush to keep that sharp tip. So again, very light pressure. I'm barely pressing down. And I'll start pressing down a little more. And I'll do another little branch connected to that one. Light pressure, press down, heavy pressure. Sam, these nice little branches coming into our birdhouse scene. Okay. Everybody, just a second to catch up on that. Everyone just painting along. I love that. Okay. Someone said they like the birdhouse because it reminds of a ship lap, which I said, yes, I love that. It's very fun. Oh, that. That'd be really cute too. Um, I'm going to show you how to sort of add these like this like board texture to the fence. It actually be so cute to add that to the birdhouse as well. Oh, make, like, yeah, that's a good idea. That'd, yep. that'd be really cute. That gives me another idea for another painting, maybe one day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, cool. So um, the next thing we're going to do, we kind of have all of our like base colors down. Um, we're going to start really adding, and I keep saying that, at the background, we've got the birdhouse, we've got the fence, we've got our branches here. We're going to start really adding in like the texture and detail um, to our painting now. So um, you may be wondering, how did I get uh, my circles on my birdhouse so perfect? And that's a great question. Whenever I'm painting these, I always try to think of the best way to help you at home paint it the way that I painted it. Because, you know, if I have some sort of like special stencil in front of me or like some sort of special tool, you guys might not have that at home. And so I always try to take that in, into consideration. So I thought really hard about it. And I came up with a really cool way to paint these perfect circles on um, our birdhouse here. So um, to do that, what we're going to do first, we're going to have to do a little bit of mixing to get the right color before we do our, our fun new technique. I'm going to grab um, my number 12 flat. This is purely just for mixing. So just FYI. I'm gonna mix a little bit of um, navy blue with some brown. I'm gonna do about a one-to-one -one ratio and I'm trying to get like a really dark, like grayish, bluish brown color. So navy blue and brown, one-to-one -one ratio and a little more brown. You can see we have this like warm, charcoaly gray color, which I really like. And this is kind of gonna be most of the darks in our painting. So you can see we have a lot of darks going on here. That's 
this is what that color is. Then I'm going to rinse my brush up because I don't need that right now. It's just for mixing. What size brush were you using, Jesse? That was just a 12 uh, flat, but it was just for mixing. So yep. whatever is fine. We just wanted to mix that color. And we're not going to use a brush for this next technique. So any anything is fine. Brush nice and clean while you guys are mixing. Okay, so I have that color mixed. Again, that was one part brown and one part navy blue. And to make these perfect circles, what we're gonna do is we're going to take the lid from one of our paints. So I would recommend using the navy or the brown for this part, um, just because we're kind of using those colors anyway. So we're gonna use this as a stamp. So to get that perfect circle, we're gonna take the bottom lip of our, this is just the cap of my folk art paint, and I'm gonna dip it in this color to make sure all of the edges are coated in paint. And then I'm gonna line it up in the center of my birdhouse and I'm gonna place it down. And I have a perfect circle for the entrance of my birdhouse. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing for my top part. There's an entrance to each part, press it down. And I have another perfect circle for my birdhouse. Because whenever you see birdhouses, they always have that perfect sort of like routered entrance. That's a great idea. Yeah, so and you wanna make sure you can rinse it off. Thank you. Yep, and you're just I using the navy blue to do that. Yeah, I'm just using, it was actually a mixture of navy blue and uh, brown. That's a great idea. Yeah, just to make sure you get it rinsed off because you don't wanna get your paint so messy. But, um, but yeah, it's just a great way to make perfect little circles. It's like a little, having your own little stencil without having to get a pack of stencils. So once you've got that, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a small flat brush. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go back to my number 12 flat and that's the one we mixed it with. And I'm just gonna carefully fill it in with that same color. Again, it was one part navy blue, one part coffee bean. I'm just gonna very carefully, if you have an even smaller flat brush, that's fine too, if you feel more comfortable with that. I'm just gonna start of use the edge and go right up to that little, the edge of that little um, shape we just made. Fill it in with that dark color we've made. Just painting tiny little perfect circles is really tricky to do. I don't know anybody who's like amazing at that, myself included. That's a great tip. Thanks. Oh, and somebody had a question. If you wanted to make this Christmassy, you could paint. Um, well, Karen was just suggesting maybe paint some ornaments um, on the tree branches or some lights. I love that. You could paint lights on the fence. That'd be super cute. If you want to get crazy, you could do a little wreath or a bow on the birdhouse. I love that. You could. I was yeah. even thinking about this when I originally did it. You could like snow cap the birdhouse, paint some snow on the branch, on the fence. That'd be super cute. All I did was I just filled in those two circles we painted. Yeah, you could put glitter on it. Some um, the glitterific would be really pretty, like snow, like iridescent glitterific would be really pretty. I love that idea. Yeah. So since we have this color mixed, and again, just as a reminder, it was one part navy blue and one part um, coffee bean. So one part navy blue, one part any brown you've got to get this dark grayish color. We are going to use this color um, to start adding some dimension to our fence. So to do that, I've got my palette knife here. So again, like I said, if you've got um, a credit card at home or like a old gift card or whatever it is at home, that works too. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load up my um, palette knife here. So you can see here, I've got some paint on my palette knife. Hopefully you guys can see that. I don't have a ton of paint on there and I have it just on one edge. I don't wanna have it on 
both edges. I don't want to have the whole bottom. It's hard for you guys to see. There you go. I don't want to have the whole bottom covered. I just want to have one edge of it covered. And I don't have any on the top. The top is clean. Just one edge on the underside of my palette knife has paint on it. So again, if you're using some sort of old gift card or something, you want the same, it's the same concept. You want one edge on the bottom side of your gift card covered in paint. You want the top to be clean. You don't want it on both edges. You just want it on that one straight edge. So once you've got that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start painting in, like I said, the dimension on our fence. So I'm gonna start on the right side and I've got the edge with the paint facing down and I'm going to sort of mark off, it's kind of like the panels of the fence. It's kind of like the, I guess that's panels. What would you call that? Like the boards of the fence. Um, I'm gonna start on the right side and I'm going to press down and drag to the left. And I have that little bit of, it's kind of tough for you guys to see. I have that little mark there, which is gonna be the shadow for our first board. Do the second one. I'm gonna go maybe an inch or so left of that and drag to the left an inch or so left of that, drag to the left. And I'm just kind of kind of load up my palette knife every so often when it starts to get dry, drag to the left. Go down further on that one. And you can see how now it's starting to look like there's like separated slats on this fence. That's the word, slats. Can you see that? I know it's kind of dark, guys. No, you can see it. Holding it up yeah. helps. Yep. Good, good. So, drag to the left and you want to make them fairly evenly spaced because of course on a fence they probably they most likely would all be the same you know width your slats of your fence so do your best to make them evenly spaced but if it's not perfect that's okay too drag to the left and then drag to the left and you can see I maybe want to add some more to the bottom areas there where maybe I didn't get enough paint on my palette knife so I'm gonna go back in and fill that in a little so you can see now we have just those nice slats sort of added. It's just a little bit of texture on the bottom of our painting there. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna rinse my palette knife off. <laughs> palette knife off. So again, like I said, we're gonna hang on to this very dark color we mixed for a little while. Um, so again, that was one part navy blue and one part um, cocoa bean. So we're gonna hang on to that color. I'm actually gonna mix a little bit more right now, um, just because we're gonna we're gonna continue to use that color for some more dark areas in our painting. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix some more of that mixture. Clean brush off. And hopefully, um, if you didn't have a hair dryer, hopefully the white part of your birdhouse is dry now. Um, because the next step is going to require that being dry. So hopefully I, there should have been enough time um, for if you didn't have the hair dryer for your, your white birdhouse to be dry at this point, because we're going to start adding um, a little bit of texture and dimension to that area. Okay, so for the birdhouse, um, like I said, we're going to continue using this dark one. So again, I know I keep saying it, but I feel like people like uh, it repeated whenever we're do, we do mixing in case they haven't caught up. Um, it was one part navy blue and one part coffee bean. So that's this dark area here on my palette. And that's what I'm about to use in the next step or two. Um, okay, so I've got my number 12 flat brush. So this is the smaller of the flats that we've been using. And I'm gonna dip it in some water and I'm kind of gonna water down some of this to do a wash. So if anybody's ever done a wash before, a wash of color um, is when you water down a paint or you uh, mix the paint with some sort of medium and um, it, it's almost like watercolor. You kind of wash it over an area and it's very thin and it kind of almost tints the area. Sometimes you'll sort of wipe it away with a soft cloth or something. Sometimes you'll just leave it on 
Um, but yeah, the term wash comes from watercolor. So that's kind of what we're gonna do. Um, you can see how it's kind of like, it looks a little bit dingy. It's like a little bit darker, uh, it's a little bit faded and rustic looking. And so this is way too bright. This is way too clean. We want it to look more like that. So to do that, like I said, I've got my dark mixture of paint. I have my number 12 flat brush and you can see here it's pretty watery. Can you guys see down there how much water I've put into that paint? It's pretty thin and watery. It's looking a little bit like watercolor at this point, and that's what we're looking for. So everybody load your brush up with this mixture. And we are going to start adding this mixture into the corners of our birdhouse. So we're gonna start here at the bottom. So I'm just gonna start adding this dark paint to the bottom of my birdhouse. The bottom corner, so I've got the bottom and I've got my two corners here that I'm adding it in. You can see how it's already starting to darken it up, which is great. That's just what we're looking for. And then I'm gonna add it to the top corners as well, because there would be shadows there too. I kind of want it to be kind of grimy, like it's been sitting out, you know, for a couple of years with lots of wear and tear, lots of sun shining on it, lots of rain and little birds living inside of it. So it's pretty faded, this birdhouse. And then I'm going to sort of not rinse my brush off, but I'm gonna get some of that water off. I'm gonna pick up some clean water. I'll, as you can see, my, my water is not terribly clean, but uh, fresh water, I guess, as fresh as you can get it from your water basin. And I'm kind of gonna blend that. So you see, I'm just sort of like blending it in. I'm sort of just using the, again, I, I use the word clean loosely for this water, um, but I'm kind of just blending it into that white. So I get that dark shadow effect. I don't want to be such a, a stark line between sort of the edges um, of this birdhouse where the shadows are and the clean white center. So it should look something like that. You can see how it's starting to get grimy already. And then once you've done that, we're gonna do the same thing for the top part. So the bottom edges are gonna be, have this dark mixture on it. And the same thing towards the top. And again, using the clean-ish water to blend it in. And if you feel like you've gotten too much on there, if you feel like you've just put way too much watery paint on there, which is easy to do, you can go ahead and pick up a paper towel and just sort of absorb some of the areas. You can see I'm just sort of patting the areas where I don't want the paint to be anymore. And it'll just pick it right up. Just pick it up where you feel like there's way too much. Super easy to remove, especially when you have that watery like that, it just kind of wants to come right back up. So it's easy to, easy to manipulate. Have our nice grimy birdhouse and for this part you really can make it as dark or as light as you want to if you want your birdhouse to be darker by all means add some more darkness if you want yours to be lighter than mine if you, if you like the way the clean birdhouse looks then leave it clean that's fine too maybe your birdhouse is brand new however you want yours to look i'm adding a little bit more darkness to mine i've decided And I'm just gonna blend that in. Okay. I'm gonna leave it there. So again, we still have this dark color. Um, we're kind of done with that wash um, effect. We're done with the watercolor-ish um, technique. And what we're gonna do is we're going to grab one of our small brushes. So I'm gonna grab my um, liner brush. This is my number four round brush. Um, this is the one that we were using to sort of like draw our uh, branches and sort of sketch out our painting in the beginning. 
And I'm gonna pick up some of this um, dark color again, the same one we've been using. And what we're gonna do is we're going to add it to our branch, but just on what would be the very underside of the branch. So as you can see here in our final painting, there's a shadow there, which kind of just gives the, brush, uh, the branch a little more dimension. Um, it's not quite so flat looking. So we're going to do that um, by using the very tip of our brush and just following on the underside of this branch, whatever you know, shape or, or size your branch is, it may be different than mine. We just wanna draw a thin little line underneath it and that's going to sort of imply a shadow. So each little area of our branch, we need to put a little, a little shadow. <clears throat> Again, I'm using the very tip of my brush. If you have an even smaller round brush you want to use, feel free to do that too. If you, um, you know, haven't done a lot of practicing or you're a little bit new to like uh, this sort of brush work and you wanted to use a smaller brush, if that's easier for you, by all means, you can do that. Again, you can see I'm bracing my hand, my hand on the canvas to keep it steady. I've got my pinky sort of holding my hand steady whenever I'm doing stuff like this, because I don't want my hand to shake. We have a nice little shadow on our branch now. So the next thing we're gonna do is we are gonna start adding a little bit of red. So like I said um, earlier, what I really wanted to have a little bit of a pop of color because it was when I was painting it, it was feeling a little bit gloomy. So we wanna add, add some of that warmth. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab my engine red. So any like primary red is fine for this part. It doesn't need to be this exact color. And I'm going to grab my 3 4 inch flat brush and for this part, we're gonna do another little technique where we're not really gonna be using um, the bristles of our brush. We're gonna be using the end of our brush to um, work as a stamp to make these little berries here. So the reason I picked the larger brush is because if you look at um, whatever brushes you have in front of you, um, while it doesn't matter what size the bristles are, the bristles kind of end up uh, deciding what the size the end of the brush is. So the fat of the brush, of course, the bigger the handle will be, and the bigger um, a dot you'll get when you use the end as a stamp. So the very small brushes have very um, sharp handles and then the larger brushes have a little bit wider of a handle. So we want sort of big berries for this. So that's why I, I chose the largest brush we have. And I'm dipping the end of my brush, you can see the very back end, the handle into my engine red. And I'm gonna make a couple of berries on the end of each of these just to give it a little pop of color to warm up our painting a little bit. Some winter berries maybe. So maybe do two or three at the end of each branch. And the more paint you have on your um, end of your brush, the bigger your spot will be. You can see I'm kind of swirling it around there. You can get a bigger spot that way. We have this nice bright berries now to warm up our painting. I'm gonna just wipe the end of my brush off so I don't make a mess. Okay, so now we've got our engine red on our palette or whatever red you happen to be using. I'm going to grab my number 12 flat brush. So again, this is the smaller of the two flats that we've been using. And we did just use it. And so my brush is a little bit wet still from being in the water. And I want it to be very dry for this part. So as you can see, I'm picking up a dry paper towel and I'm going to squeeze those bristles because I want to get as much moisture out of this brush as I can because I really want it to be very dry or as dry as I can get it for the next step. Sometimes when I'm painting in the studio and I want to do something like a dry brush technique, I'll even hit my brush with a hair dryer if I don't have like a, a dry brush in front of me that I want to use. I'll just dry it off with a hair dryer because I just want it to be as dry as I can get it for this next step. So you can see I'm pinching my brush in between my paper towels so I can get it as dry as possible. 
nice and dry. Okay, so that said, the next technique is going to be a dry brush technique, <laughs> in case that wasn't clear. Um, so what we're gonna do, again, I have my number 12. I just dried it off really well. I've got um, my engine red here, but any red is fine. And I wanna put just a tiny bit of paint on my brush. So if you look here in the camera, there's, you can't even see the red paint on my brush. That's how little paint I have on there. I, I dipped it in the red, so the red's on there for sure, but you can't even barely see it in the bristles. That's how much of the paint I have wiped off. So we're going to do a dry brush effect on our fence here. So on each slat or so, I just put too much paint on, I'm gonna wipe them off again. On each slat or so, I'm going to just drag down a red stroke. So here, I'll lift it up for you guys. Remember we painted in those slats earlier with our um, palette knife. On each slat, sort of on the left side of the slat, I'm gonna pull down and make a nice red swipe. And that's just, oh, that was a big one. Um, that's just gonna sort of warm up our fence a little. It's looking a little bit cool. The whole painting is very cool now. So we're gonna warm up this fence to give it a little bit of color and a little bit of warmth um, for our painting. Again, I have very little paint on my brush and you can always go back and add more, but it's gonna be tricky to take it away. So I'm just swiping down on each slat there very little paint. My brush is very dry. And again, you can see I can go back and add more red if I feel like it needs it, but it's hard to take it away. So that's why we're starting with a very, very dry brush. Just to add some warmth to our painting. You can see how that really warmed it up. It's not so uh, quite so cool and gloomy anymore. I'm just gonna rinse my brush off. Dry it off really well. Okay, so we're coming up on the last couple of steps. We're, gonna, we're doing okay as far as keeping it within an hour. Um, so for this step, I'm gonna go ahead, now that we know how to dry brush, and I'm gonna grab my 3 4 inch flat brush, and we wanna do the exact same thing. So remember when we had our, our brush just a second ago and we wanted it very dry? I'm doing the same thing with this brush now. It's, this one's a little bit drier than that one was, but just to be sure, I'm gonna pinch it between um, dry paper towel to make sure that I'm removing any moisture that might be in the bristles of the brush because I want it to be as dry as possible. And for this, we're not gonna be dry brushing with red, but we're gonna be dry brushing with white. So if you look between these two paintings, um, you can see that our painting that we have tonight is still a good bit darker than the original painting. And that's because our last step is to go ahead and dry brush with some white across our painting just to give it a little bit more of a farmhouse or a rustic uh, look and to just give it a little bit more texture. So to do that, um, just like we do with the red, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put a tiny bit of white on our brush and then wipe some of it off. You can see here how there's hardly any white in my brush. I wiped most of it off. And we're gonna start at the top and just sort of pull down on our painting. You can see here, I have very little paint on my brush and again, it's the same as the red, it's because it's, it's easier to add than it is to take away for this technique. So I'm sort of dragging my brush across the surface. I'm sticking to the background first to add just a little bit more texture to my painting. You can see I'm kind of on the, oops, I got some red on my brush. I'm sticking with the top for now. Watch out for the berries because my berries are still wet. So if yours are still wet, make sure you're careful around that because I don't want to drag that right all over my painting like I just did. So again, very lightly I'm adding texture. Let me hold it up so you guys can see a little better. You can kind of drag it across the edge of your painting to get some really uh, sort of aged texture on the edge of your painting. Again, I have hardly any paint on my brush. I'm just dragging it around, just sort of lightening it and giving it some, some, more, some more texture and a little bit more color and just brightening it up a little.
you guys see how little I'm adding as I go? It's kind of a slow process because you want to build it up. You definitely don't want to put too much paint on your brush. I'm going to get between my branches a little there, but again, I'm kind of avoiding where the berries are because my berries are still wet. So keep that in mind. Or you can go ahead and take a hair dryer if you want. Jesse, can you hold up the painting one more time? Yeah. So can you see all those sort of like dry brush areas in the background? It just makes it look a little more rustic, a little more worn, and it gives it a little bit more texture. Hardly any paint. You, can, you can't even see the paint in my, in my brush hardly. There's hardly any paint on there. And I'm going to move down to the fence area too, sort of dragging it across. You can pull down on the slats to give those a little more dimension as well. So it's a lot, but that's okay. I, I like the variation of some areas are a little more heavy handed with the white and some ears have less white. I really like the way that looks. So you can see I have a couple big swipes in some areas and I really like that. And then I'm gonna pay close attention to the edges. So I'm gonna sort of pull up. Can you see what I'm doing there? I'm sort of pulling up on the edges because I want that really um, bright edge because it kind of looks like the, the paint has been chipped off or something like the painting itself is worn down. And I really like the way that looks. So I'm really paying close attention to the edges. And then when you're satisfied with all of your dry brushing, all that's left to do is to sign your painting because that was the last step for our winter birdhouse. Love it. And again, I love the ideas of how to make it more Christmassy. Like there's so many different yeah. things you could do. I love that. So fun. you can make it springier by using lighter colors. You can paint this again in a couple months. It's almost spring, which is so crazy. We're heading in that direction. Um, oh, I but yeah, that. I love that. Idea. I love making it Christmassy. It's almost yeah, spring. It's December. I know, right? Doesn't it feel that way though? I just feel like this whole year has been rushing by. We're already thinking about spring. <laughs> we are all ready for spring. Before you know it, it's gonna be March. <laughs> um, so awesome, thank you, Jesse. Thank you everybody for joining us. Jesse's gonna actually show the painting next week. So Kirsten um, will be here teaching this beautiful wreath next week. Yeah, and she's gonna show you guys how to personalize it too with your name or with, you know, a nice holiday word, it's going to be totally up to you. So this is a really fun one. She's going to be doing a lot of techniques um, that are sort of new to this uh, class. So it's techniques that I've never taught before. Um, so make sure you tune in for this because it's going to be a really fun and sort of different one. Yeah. Awesome. And no palette knife. <laughs> <laughs> you snuck one in there today. I did sneak one in here, but don't worry. Kirsten's always like, I always use a palette knife and people get so scared. But don't worry, this is going to be Kirsten with no palette knife. So make sure you guys tune in for this. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, thank you everybody for joining us. Thanks, Jesse, it looks great. Thank you, Michaels. Kirsten will be here next week um, teaching the wreath with a personalized piece in the middle of it. So thank you guys. Don't forget, you can check this video out on Michael's Community Classroom page after if you wanna paint along or go back. Thank you, Michaels, and we will see you guys next week.